Beautiful day today. Amazing day. Amazing day. Hot and beautiful today in Japan. Hot and beautiful. Hi, right, YouTubers. We're here again with Jason. Back um, again. Back again. We have a beautiful day. Seven days of typhoon and rain. One beautiful day and then another seven days. So we decided to do some few amazing videos on how to put few things. Right, Jason? Right. Yeah, exactly. We've, we've actually had the typhoon coming up from the south and it's been storming every single day today is like a fluke it's beautiful sunny skies so we decided we're gonna go ahead and sh you know shoot a pretty good video today um today we're going to show you guys a couple things that you don't really get to see a lot on the internet at least for our bikes um for we've got um one thing we've got are sprint uh p08 f185 filters which a lot of people I, i've never seen on the internet yet maybe they're out there but i'm going to compare all three filters for you i'm going to show you the differences and show you you know, and explain a little bit about them. Um, you, you know, there's there's three different sprint filters. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, Ash has also brought some different parts for his bike. And if we have time today, we'll also put those in. So I've got a sprint filter for my final edition. He's got a sprint filter for his V4R. And then he's also got some other goodies that we're gonna show you about. I'm really excited. Nice, nice, nice. Yes, um, actually we, me and Jason, as we told you last time, we like to, to pimp up our bikes and uh, we really want to know what do we buy but actually in internet we found out that there aren't enough videos right how to put the sprockets how to put this and that mm -hmm. so we just to be honest with you is try and error if you look at um, jason's corner there he has so much cnc parts so few parts sometimes he he bought and he couldn't fit them for his bike so he, he for example the the clip-ons he gave them to me because he couldn't fit them in his so uh, we don't want you to do this kind of mistakes we don't want you to lose your money um, since we are doing it anyways, we want to have a few videos for you so we can we can basically spread spread the knowledge. All right. Yeah. So should we show them what do we have in terms of parts or? Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. Let's go ahead and move on to that. All right. Very exciting. Hey, Jason. Yeah. So we have the the babes here. They are chilling. Got them. They they want to be close because it got a little chilly in the last couple of days, so I put them really near each other. They're warming yeah, each other babe. up. And I just arrived today from uh, from home. He's getting a little suntan out there. So, the goodies. The goodies. So this here, um, later we'll show you a little bit of more detail. This here is the Sprint, look at that. This is the Sprint P08 F185. A lot of people get this confused with the P16 for the race filter. The P16 is a race filter. However, it is not waterproof. This is waterproof and this actually lets a lot more air through. This lets up to like 15,000 milliliters or whatever it's crazy. air. crazy, it's crazy. Yeah, whereas the, the P16 only lets uh, 10. 10,000. Wow. So, and then the, uh, I have right here, I've got the, the other ones here. This is a P08. And after we get the P16 out of my bike, I'll show this you. This is the grade two, right? From some super light, is it the same? This is, this is the P08 regular one. Usually right. you'll get in, if you get like an acropropic system, lots of them come with this. This is a race filter, right. but as you can Look, see, it's, it's, it's. You, you can't see his face. You can see nothing here. Right, yeah. and honestly, if I blow through this, I could feel the breeze on my fingertips. Okay, right. if I blow on this, I don't feel anything. Um, the other thing is, you could spill water on this, it's waterproof, which is perfect, you get caught in the rain, you don't gotta worry about water getting your engine. This one is not waterproof, this one also lets only 5,000 milliliters of air through there, which is still good compared to a regular paper filter. Both of these are an upgrade from stock, but this is the way to go. These filters run about, I would say after shipping and everything, probably about $300. Right. So they're, they're expensive, but were they that expensive? I can't remember well, how much I bought. With them. shipping yeah. and everything, I would say you'll spend two fifty to three hundred. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they're a lifetime. Where did you get yours from? Oh crap! Omni Racing was it? I don't remember. It, one of them, I've, I've gotten them for three different places because usually we get our stuff from Desmohart, as we said. But right. Desmohart doesn't have these filters yet. Um, so I've gotten, I think, one from Conquest Racing, and another one from uh, Omnia Racing. Omnia back Racing, in the yeah, day. And yeah. then there was another one that I bought from a company called Genial Motors. These are all. I think these are all in Italy, all nice, these companies. Nice, so nice. yeah, I mean, this is a lot of people say that's a lot of money for a filter, but honestly, this filter will last you forever, forever. You just blow it out with an air gun or you blow it out. 
and it's it's clean again. You right. don't ever have to buy another filter, so it's definitely worth the investment. Do you have an OEM like uh, like the first one before the no. the filter? No, there's so no probably, reason to keep an OEM have, filter. Yeah, Come on. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's the filter, real quick. Um, let's take a look at what else Ash Ash's goodies. So um, Ash has got a beautiful AM Factory triple clamp. This thing is a beautiful piece of artwork right here. Um, if, if you want to see it compared to my CNC, so my bike has the CNC Primac Racing on it. This is the AM Factory. They both look beautiful. And both of them are just the same to install. Um, nothing too difficult, I would say. Beautiful, very good craftsmanship on AM Factory here. Um, these are the coupons which Ash, uh, which I, uh, Ash got that were originally mine. And actually, it's not that they didn't fit. The difference between these clip-ons and other clip-ons on the internet is these ones are actually make the stance of the bike a little Longer, wider. wider right. A little wider. And to be honest, I didn't really want that. So I decided to get a different set of CNC clip-ons. Um, so Ash, Ash has a V4R, which is a white bike. So having wider clip-ons also is, a, you know, is not bad. It wouldn't look bad on my bike. I like to be a little, a little bit more no, tight. Yeah. So that was the only difference. They all, they all have the same size Olins. Yep. The only ones that won't fit the 1299 uh, base model, and the, the basically the base models have Showa, and the Showa actually is bigger than this. Right. So if you're gonna buy clip-ons or a triple clamp, make sure you get the right one for Olins mm. or the right one for Showa because they're a different size. 1199R, 1299R, all the ones with R are usually gonna be the small Olin ones. Right. A little bit smaller. You can't really tell the difference until you actually get it. Um, last but not least, it's not open yet, but these are EvoTech. Open it, open it, open it. EvoTech sliders. Let me rip this bad boy open. Nice and neatly, just in case uh, we use it and return it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, you see, you can't see it. Yeah, my worry was, on this one you can see the nut. Um, on the CNC ones, they have like a flatter. Yeah, when these aren't CNC. See. Can but. see Jason is really meticulous about these kind of things, about aesthetics, so he doesn't like this, right? And uh, actually, yeah. I like them to be honest. I had the same, but gold. In actually, Lyndon, Lyndon has my other ones on there. Those ones aren't actually CNC. You guys don't make fun of me, but mine, those ones are actually from China because I was in a hurry and the CNCs one would have taken me time. I bought some Chinese ones which got here in like a couple days, and I figured, what the hell? They're it's a track bike sliders, you know it. They're gonna get damaged either way. Right. Um, if I do fall, which right. I will never fall. Don't say never. never so, say never. <laughs> uh, so all right. That's, that's what we got here. Um, this is my my sprint filter, um, which is a, as you can see, this is a eleven nine 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 five nine eight nine nine twelve nine nine. Every single model from there filter this is the v4 v4 yeah a little bit different this fits every single v4 this fits basically every v2 from 2011 on right so on the internet if you look sometimes it'll say like 2012 to 2014 2015 the filter is the same exact filter so if they're out of stock for the 1299 let's get an 119 filter it's the same exact thing right okay this is probably one of the few actually there are a lot of interchangeable parts on the 1199 and the 1299 Anyways, so let's go ahead. Um, we're gonna organize the bikes. We're gonna get. We're gonna get going. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I'll talk as well. Yeah. Talk. Because I'm explaining to you as well. So on a, a, a 1299 and 1199, 899, uh, they all have the same thing. First thing you want to do is take off these bolts here. These two cap bolts. Put them aside somewhere where you won't lose them. Um, some people are very uh, OCD and they like to put their bolts in a specific spot so they, they put them in the right order. But to be honest, lots of these bolts are exactly the same. I'm going to go ahead and take the seat off. Easy, smooth, easy peasy. Because these, this bolt, this bolt, and these bolts are, most of these are gonna be the same size. I think this is a four, an Allen key four. So once you get all these off here, these are pretty simple to get off. So we'll go ahead and uh, take off these bolts here. How did you, while you're doing this, how did you learn how to do mechanics and how, how, um, how you became good at this? The old fashioned way, if it broke, I took a look at it and figured out how it worked. Nice. To be honest, I, to be honest, 
I used to be a, a ASC uh, certified mechanic in the US for cars, not for bikes, but mechanics usually can figure out once you're good at you know mechanics and something you're gonna get good at mechanics and other things plus I just like to figure stuff out on my own um, carbon this is actually a factory Ducati performance key cover so I'll go ahead and put this to the side here um, next thing we got to do you need an eight millimeter that wasn't good eight millimeter Okay, so eight millimeter, take these bad boys off right here. These are lock nuts. There's two of them. Sounds like Guy. That's Guy. Really? On a G4, yeah. So we'll take off these two here. And you're not supposed to drop bolts, but I just dropped one. Because I'm kind of rushing to keep the video a little short. It's I all right, John, take your time, enjoy, enjoy. Yeah, if, if anybody has any questions or how did you get this or that off or blah, blah, blah. Please uh, ask us in the comments. Then we've got two bad boys, which is the next size up from the four. I guess it's a I don't know, five or six or whatever. So the next size up from the four, there's nothing in between. Um, we'll take them off here. So basically what this is, this is just the, the mount that holds down the gas tank. And once you get this off, this piece should just take come right off, Boink. just like that. Holds down your your gas tank. Okay, so once you get that off, let me. The the other thing you need to do is you got to take off these carbon pieces here, this piece and this piece. What you got to do is you have to slide it forward. So actually, it's kind of tricky. Ash, can you come around here? The stock on some of these bikes, the stock ones have some some secret clips. This one, what you do is you lift up here and you get that piece in here. You see how they're like yep. the little hook there? Then after that, you slide it forward and then you lift up. And then on here, as you lift up, you're gonna be pulling outward because there's another clip right in here, which is separate from these ones, like so. And then, let me get in this position here. Ah, oh, there we go. And we're good to go. Okay. Yeah, so it has this clip here, yeah, 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 yeah. which a lot of them actually don't have this. So it usually slides out a lot easier. This one's a little trickier because it has this, which this is from Ducati, so they know what they're doing. So that's one. And the reason why you have to take them off, if I were to lift the tank forward, it's going to actually hit it. Right? Right. So, and I'm debating, I think I'm going to take my tank off, not just lift up my tank, because it's easier to do it off. So same thing, you're going to lift up here. Pop this bad boy out like that. Slide forward, lift up at the same time, pull out. So that pops up there. Then, and actually the, this side doesn't have a little hook here. So this side's actually easier to come off. The reason why it doesn't have a hook here, so if yours is missing, don't think, oh my God, I broke it. Usually they don't have it here. Some of them do, but the reason they don't have it here is because there's, there's wires in here. And these wires, tend to block this from going in if you have a hook. Some aftermarket right. companies put a hook there. To be honest, it doesn't have to have it because it's got this. Um, so let me go ahead and put this aside. Okay, now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take, I decided I'm gonna take my tank completely off because it can be a pain in the butt to try to do it while somebody's holding up. Like you could do it and just hold the tank upward because the tank has two bolts here. Right. That it just swings. Right. But it's kind of in the way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the tank off really quickly. I'm gonna use uh, something a little bit easier, which is, I've got one of these bad boys here, so I can reach. Okay, this is a little bit bigger than the, the, the other one I have. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these ones out here because we're gonna take the tank off completely. These shouldn't be too, too tight because they're actually just to hold the tank down. Um, they, they have uh, rubber grommets in there, so you can actually over tighten these and strip it because of the rubber. It, you, you think that you're tightening it down, but actually you can over tighten them. So once you get it loose, you take it out and also take that out too. A lot of people forget to take this out in there. They're like, I can't, I got the bolt out, but the tank won't come off because you have to get this out as well. Um, so let's go ahead and put that aside here. And be careful, most people 
I, I recommend covering your, your tank with like towels or something to keep it from getting damaged, but I've actually done this a million times, so I've, I've never scratched, though I don't want to jinx myself. So I, I know where to do it and how to do it. But like, for example, if you're doing this, boom, and you hit that, yeah. you're going to be very sorry. Or the other way and hit your tank. So you got to be very careful. Um, I don't always follow all the rules, just so you know. So just because I do it this way doesn't necessarily mean it's the right way. Okay, so once you get that out, and another uh, tip, try not to hold tools above your bike as you're working on it, trying to do something. Because odds are you might drop something, a socket could fall off and hit your tank. Try to keep tools away the from details, the top, yep, above your bike. Yep. Yeah, that's my biggest tip possible. So now, the, the big part, you lift this up, you're going to have a ground here. You unplug the ground, this is the ground of the fuel pump. Then you unplug your fuel pump, which is here, there's a little clip here. You push the clip up and you push out and it comes out. Then when you lift up a little bit higher, you have your gas line right here, okay? Um, I'm gonna grab a little rag so I don't drip gas down because every time you do it, you're gonna get a little bit of gas. So I'll take a, a little shop rag, I'll put it un underneath it like so. And then I'm gonna go ahead and you, there's a button here. You push on it, make sure it's completely clear and yeah, it pulled out. you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, because actually these O-rings are quite sensitive and if you don't put it on or take it off properly, you can actually damage the O-ring and you're going to have gas leaking all the way down in your, That's true. in your engine. So now that it's it's done, I can just Beautiful. lift off the gas It's almost, Beautiful. almost a full tank, so it's a little heavy, but it's an aluminum tank, so... And there we have it, boys and girls. Take a look inside. Right now, there's my Sprint filter. I okay. thought you're going to open from here. No, oh, you can't. You can't. How are you going to do it now? So in here, you've got these latches. I don't know if the camera can see it. You pull them towards you like this, boink. Uh -huh. And then the left, the other side, boink. And then the easiest way, to, this is actually a little bit of a pain in the butt to get it out as well. You want to fold these, these latches down towards the filter itself like that. And that's it. Yeah, and then you can get it out. What I recommend doing is lots of times the filter will come out It'll be easier if you take the Damn. slide the filter out separately. Look how dirty that bad boy is. And you had the super lights as well. Say what? You have the super li the super lights, right? Uh, no, 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 no. Sprint. So this is Sprint. Okay. Yeah. yeah super light is sprocket. Company. Right, right, right. Or but push drive. Which model is this? This is the P16. P16. Okay. Yeah. And let me go ahead and get this this out as well because I want to show the 1199 riders something that I've done. Um, let me go ahead and set this down over here and take this out. So, um, uh, as I said, it's not fun to get in and out. So you gotta wiggle it around. Actually, mine is gonna be a little easier to get out than some because I've changed some stuff. And I'll show you what I changed here in a moment if I could get this bad boy out. Uh, oh, there we go. This is not easy to get out. Oh. It's just so hard to get these things out without because I don't want to take off the clips. I don't even have to take this out to be honest. I just you have to put it in the other, the other. I think it's wider there. Yeah, like uh, this way. There we go. So now I'll get that out of the way. This out of the way. There we go. I just got a little bit of gas on me. So. When you guys get down here, yours, your, yours are going to look a little bit different than this. As you can see, there's, no, there's nothing here. What I actually did is um, the stock one has a metal mesh plate kind of thing here. There's like little, uh, if you look in here, little uh, melted rivets. It's the, the plate is melted on there. And actually, all I did, because I wanted to get as much air as possible, because that's how I am. So I, all I did was I pushed really hard and I popped that metal grate out. Okay. Okay, you can actually push hard and pop it out, and this is what it's going to look like. Okay. Um, also, there's there's plastic pieces, which I cut off here and made it nice and smooth, because I, as again, I want as much airflow as possible in this bad way to get as much horsepower. Um, so that's an a, a easy upgrade if you want to try that. Um, so now what we're going to do is let's, let's take a look real quick at the P16, the P08, and the P08 F1. They're all kind of dirty, so, um, and mine, new bad boy right there. It's the first time I've opened it up. Boom. 
so fresh and so clean it's already pre-oiled so nice and clean so let's take a look now this is a, a factory ducati po8 hold up look it, it even says i just spoke japanese right um it even shows the ducati logo here because these are the ducati these are one of the ones that usually come in a, a ducati Panagale r or something like that so you might have one of these in your bike already um, so this is the PO8, P16, PO8, F185. And uh, like I said, this is 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 milliliters of air. Um, and again, as you, as you look, you can slightly see through this one, P16. Can't really see through that one. So as you go up, look at the P16, uh, the P16 versus the uh, PO8, F1. Different. Right. Yeah, so that's how you can tell the colors as well. This is a, the P16 is usually a gray color. The PO8 is usually like a goldish, uh, I don't, I don't know, orangish yeah. peach color. And then the P P8 08 F185 is a black looking screen. Right. Okay, so that's how you can tell which one you have in your bike. Um, so let's go ahead and let's install this bad boy really quick. Now, when you get this in there, if you notice on the filter, there's there's two lines here. These dashes actually fit so this can stay on there. And then when it pushes, when you when you lock these into place, it pushes this up against the filter and it doesn't move. Right. Okay, so you gotta make sure when you put it in there, this is not like off. Right, right. Because right. it can still lock down but be in the wrong place. Right, right. And is there is there an upside down thing? Because no, like the, no. There's no upside down, it doesn't no. matter. Okay. There is backwards though. <clears throat> okay. But the, 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 the more uh, angled side needs to go towards the front of your bike. Right. So if you have the word sprint filter on there, it needs to go towards the front of your bike. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is, like I said, I like to put this in first to get this out of the way. Then I will go in and put that, because sometimes these will pop off. You can actually take these off if you want to make your life better. But sometimes putting them back on, you, you will forget, oh, was it this way or this way? So for now, if you do pop it off, Make sure it opens up just like this. Right. Like that, okay? Because you can pop them off pretty easily. So I'm gonna work it back in there. Bear with me, it takes a few minutes or seconds or we'll see. You gotta be gentle in here because there's a lot of wires and a lot of gas lines and stuff in oh, here. Oh, easy. Well, it's not in yet. We're not in the clear yet. Still got the rear. Let me get this gas line out of the way. Okay, so now we got that in there. And let me, there. So now that that's in there, this, to be honest, this is the hardest part right here. Um, the other thing you might wanna do, if you can look down in the hole, make sure down in there is clean. Mine's clean, because I always vacuum it out. If you've got some leaves or some dirt or dead bugs in there, you might wanna vacuum it out first before putting the filter back on. Right. Okay, look at the factory lines here. Yeah. Okay, so look how dirty it is. See, the P, this this is the thing with the P16 filter, guys. The P16 filter does let residue through, like little grains of sand and stuff like that. It's, right. it's a track filter, to be honest. The P08 F185 does not let that jump through. Now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and slide this in. I'm going to put the, P, the Sprint um, filter up at the top. Let's be careful, because you can actually bend and damage the filter if you're not careful with it. So make sure this is out of the way. Slide this above it, like so. Make Beautiful. sure you get it sitting down on there nicely. Then push it up against the uh, the bike. It'll you'll feel it. It won't click in place. You're not going to feel it click or anything. So it's kind of hard sometimes to know if you've got it or not. Um, I've done it a, a billion times, so I'm kind of like comfortable with doing it. But it can be a big pain in the butt to get it in there. And then once you get it in, once I make sure it's it's in place, uh, you pop this over, just like that. And I think, I think that's a job well done. Now, guys, I, I probably made it look a little easy. To be honest, it's not this easy. So if you're struggling, sometimes when I put this in, there are days where I can't get it, honestly, and it's just a pain in the butt. Take a break. Don't get upset. Chill out. Good try point. again. Because sometimes, sometimes I'll get frustrated because it just won't go in. It'll slide off the, the little uh, bracket or something or the bracket piece will fall off. Lots of things can happen. So just take your time. 
be careful. And then again, make sure those lines are in the filter. Like I'm checking mine right now. Beautiful, mine is perfect. So that's it now. Did you, did you lock this side? They're locked. That side, Even I, this side? I left it locked. So when I put okay. it on, it was already okay. hard. Perfect. That's why this side was kind of hard when I pushed it. Was got, like, it. Bam! got it, got it, got it. Usually you can do them both at the same time, but right. I found out this way is actually easier to hold it in place. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So now that we've got that done, I'm gonna just double check, make sure everything's clean in there. It's a good time to clean out your throttle bodies, um, especially if you have a P16 filter in here, because like I said, the P16 filter can get some garbage in here. So you clean out the, the throttle body, you can vacuum it out or, or whatnot. There's always a little bit of dirt in here. And cleaner air burns better than dirty air. Clean it out. Also, I've already done it last time I put because that P16 filter's only been there for a couple months. Um, I swapped it out because it was from my R. I put a POAF185 in there and put the P16 in here. And now I'm taking the P16 out because I love that POAF1 that much. You said, man, you said you made me buy it. God yep. damn it. Yep. One of the best things you ever buy in your life. You you know you got the best intake, you know, the best intake management system there on these bikes. So after you clean it up. Um, let me see if I can get down in there to clean this one out. It's just a little dirty. Actually, I cleaned it out not so long ago, so it's not bad. And then always check in your air box to see if you've got any junk, any loose bolts. I've already done it on my, my bike before. Always double check the bolts, make sure nothing's loose because anything that gets loose in here will fall straight down into your engine. So if you have a loose nut or a loose bolt in here, and your throttle body opens, it can suck that, that right down the throttle body right into your valves and damage everything. So make sure everything, there's nothing in here that can, uh, that can uh, fall in. Everything's clean. Looks clean, yeah. So let's go ahead and put it back together. Get my tank. I found out. Okay, go. You can say. In a second. Let me, let me help you with this. I've got it. Okay. Um, the thing that I'm going to say here in a second is, now, come around this side. There's one thing I forgot to point out to you guys. There's two tubes up here. These are drain tubes. These are overflow tubes for your gas. Okay, there's two of them. There's one for the cap and uh, actually there's two. One for above the cap, one for below the cap. They drain out to the bottom of your bike right here. If you don't have them connected, it's not a big deal but it'll get like residue and shit on the inside of your bike. So if, what I did was I, I hooked up the back first and I left the front loose so I could pop them on there. So, um, and it doesn't matter which one is which? No, cause they both, my bike, these bikes used to have a charcoal canister on them. Now these Panagales from the factory come with a charcoal canister. One of these drain pipes actually go down here inside here to a charcoal canister. Actually, I removed the charcoal canister with a kit and now I don't have it anymore. So I don't have to worry about that. Um, let me make sure I get this tube. That's why this tube's actually longer because I made it longer so it's easier to, to reach once you get it on there. There you go. And then I'm gonna use pliers to, to wiggle it up. Go. So now I just pulled it out because I accidentally had that in the can. So, one more time. Okay, everything is nice and ready to go.